So this is lecture number five. Remember lecture number four was about satellite accounts. So if you remember that we talked about accounts that were just appended to the ordinary input-output tables, the monetary input-output tables, and perhaps you also remember the fundamental uh, input-output relationship. I'll just write it uh, again on the, on the blackboard. Okay, so you define in a demand pool model, you define Y, and you get your result in terms of uh, total uh, requirements for gross output. So um, today we're going to generalize this monetary model um, towards physical quantities. And um, do you remember uh, when we did, um, when we introduced multipliers, we were talking about value added, and that went like this. V total value added is Vx, okay, oops, Vx vector, and then we inserted this fundamental IO identity for x, and we got V1 minus A minus 1 inverse Y, and we said um, these were the multipliers for V. Okay, so the same value added is either a product of a direct intensity and gross output or of a multiplier and final demand. Okay, since final demand is smaller than gross output, you can straight away tell that the multiplier is always larger than the intensity. And that is because the multiplier contains the intensity but also all indirect sort of supply chain uh, economic interdependency that are inherent in, in the matrix A, which comes from the input-output table. So today, um, we're going to generalize this to environmental quantities, and this is very simple, as you will see. So instead of uh, writing this equation down for gross value added, we just write it down for total emissions in an economy, okay? Let E be total emissions of an economy. And we can do this simply by saying, well, this could be, first of all, uh, the product of an emissions intensity epsilon and gross output x and epsilon, well, you can simply calculate this. For example, if you, um, if you have uh, statistics of, um, of uh, emissions by sector, that's why I put a, a line underneath, so this is a vector of emissions in the economy by sector, you get this from the National Greenhouse Gas Inventory or for any other um, suitable statistics on emissions. And you, mul you uh, post multiply this with um, with uh, with gross output, then you get this 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 uh, this intensity here. Okay, and you can straight away see if you if you multiply this with x, you get e again. Anyway, this is the same the same that we did for um, for value added. It's nothing different. So in this case, with it, with emissions, um, the difference is that. Um, the unit of this vector here is dollar per dollar. The unit of this vector here is, say, kilograms per dollar. Okay? So, and now it's straightforward. We insert the fundamental IO ident identity and we get epsilon 1 minus A inverse times Y. And this is the emissions multiplier. So any number in here is also, the unit of that is a kilogram per dollar, and it tells you the emissions that are caused as a consequence of, of final demand in one sector, say, but including all upstream uh, interdependencies in the economy. That's the emissions multiplier. The same holds for um, Water, labor, there are labor multipliers. Labor multipliers are quite, uh, you can find them quite often in the older literature, let's say 70s, 80s, they were dealing with, with water. 70s a lot with energy, but we, all, um, we find um, emissions intensity sort of from the period where climate change became a hot topic. And, uh, but anyway, the formalism is, is always the same. Read this up in uh, a generalized input-output calculus for Australia. This one in economic systems research. And that will, um, what is interesting in this publication, I'll just um, do a, a diagram. What I, what's interesting in here is that you can, for example, calculate labor multipliers 
and energy multipliers, okay? And then plot them against each other. And what you get is a, a labor multiplier, and this is energy multiplier. And for example, ele electricity supply, this industry is here. Um, retail labor multipliers against energy multipliers. So up here we find electricity supply. Yeah. A lot of energy. Energy multiplier is here uh, again in, in megajoules per dollar. And this would be in employment years per dollar. Right? So um, electricity supply, lots of energy used in the power plant, but if you go in, in, into a turbine hole, there's hardly anybody in there. Uh, retail trade, you know, of course you have um, freezers and you lose a bit of energy, but compared to a power plant, it's not very energy intensive, but lots of people. And um, you plot all industries or an economy in here, and you see this nice uh, cloud that's sort of inversely proportional, and it just means that in the broadest sense, um, considering all interdependencies in the economy, labor is a substitute for energy. Okay, what's energy intensive is usually la not labor intensive. You, so you can, you can uh, rationalize and, and lay off people by automating that means more energy. That's, and that's, uh, people have found that in, in other studies as well. And that's also contained in here, in this ESR publication, which you can use.